The Scarlet and Violet epilogue introduced a brand new mythical Pokemon, Petcherunt. This is a poison and ghost type Pokemon, it's the first we've had since Gen 1. Petcherunt has all around decent stats at 88 for everything randomly, except for its defense, where it has an insane base 160. This thing came with a brand new move called Malignant Chain. This is a 100 base power poison move with a 50% chance to poison the target. What's even crazier is that this pairs with its new exclusive ability called Poison Puppeteer. This makes it so that if Petcherunt poisons a target, they also become confused. We can also make use of Stab Hex, which power doubles if the target has a status condition, and this little berry is an absolute menace. Ladies and gentlemen, today my main goal is to pull off some Petcha Berry Guy shenanigans. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it, and today I do have a super good match for you, let's jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Galvantula. Electric Spider comes in basically just to lay down some Sticky Web, which is a little bit annoying. I just decided to lead off with the Swamp Hurt here, lay down some Swamp Hurt. And while I know that this thing does carry Energy Ball, I figure they probably go for that Sticky Web turn one. So I can then just flip turn, break the Focus Sash, have a nice pivot, and then all of a sudden Swamp Hurt's dead. Yeah, they do go for that Energy Ball, and I pay the price for staying in there. I feel like 9 out of 10 times people just opt to get up the Sticky Web. Uh, it also reveals that this thing is in fact Life Orb, so I'm thinking, damn, Spider's gonna hurt a little bit. And I don't have a whole lot to deal with this thing, but what I do have is Chester Cheeto. This thing just got out of the gym. I snorted some Cheetos and I'm ready to scare the spider right back. So I am specially defensive. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. And I figure a knockoff kind of covers for a switch, but also probably knocks it out if they stay in. They end up going for the Thunder here, which does do around half to me. Um, which is some pretty hefty damage, but then I can just be like, hey, knock it off, bro. And then he actually ends up living it, and that's honestly unfortunate. I kind of thought that was going to kill. thought I was going to get away with it without the sticky web staying up, but I figure at this point, I do want to conserve the Incineroar. It's a nice little Intimidate switch in, and I can just go directly into the Excadrill. What that does is it covers for another Thunder, but also he just sprays down some, some webs around here, and we like to keep this shit clean. So what I'm thinking is now I'm actually in a great position to go for the Rapid Spin, um, I am going to be slower, so I have to take an Energy Ball, but check this out. Assault Vested Excadrill does not give a damn, like I'm the Honey Badger out here. I take the Energy Ball, I can then fire off a Rapid Spin, it's enough to knock this thing out, get rid of the Sticky Web, and give me a nice little plus one in speed. So, that's pretty solid, don't have to worry about the webs around here. And now they get uh, a nice little free switch into whatever they like. So, Excadrill's feeling fast out here, but I don't have a whole lot to do to a Flygon, who seems to be flying extra high today, I don't know what Buddy's deal is. But I'm gonna end up switching here. I have to go into the Amoongus. It's kind of the best thing I have that can take an attack uh, from the Flygon. I'm also considering, you know, this thing could potentially go for a Dragon Dance. Very scary at that point. But then, you know, Fun Guy can come in here and be the opposite of a Fun Guy and then put him right to sleep with the Spore. So they do actually end up going for the Earthquake. Kind of tells me this thing's probably gonna be running like a Scarf set uh, if they don't opt for the setup there. But then it goes for the U-Turn and I'm thinking, I don't know what the hell's going on. But he does get poked by my nice little Rocky Helmet, so that is fun. However, they now get to switch into whatever they want to kind of take a Spore. Luckily, they don't have any Grass types to kind of resist that, but they bring in Metagross who, for whatever reason, he doesn't extend his legs. I didn't realize that Metagross's like flying animation was just kind of an idle thing he did in battle. Now he's sleeping with his arms up, looks like a damn goofball, and I do put it to sleep, which is pretty nice. Now this actually opens the door for me to try to bring in the berry. Now, I know that, obviously, being poison type, a Psychic Fangs hurts, but it hasn't taken its guaranteed turn of sleep here, and I can bring in uh, the Petcha Berry dude. So I am floating in the air with my air balloon, which is important. That message that comes up for like a half second is pretty nice here, because that makes me resistant to the Earthquake. I can then go for the Terra Ground, just in case this thing wakes up and tries to hit me with a Psychic Fangs. Uh, the Terra Ground is going to allow me to take that extremely nicely. This base 160 defense with some defensive uh, investment on this thing, it's extremely annoying to kill if you only have physical attackers against it. So, I go for the nasty plot here. I'm thinking some absolutely nasty, devious shit. You wouldn't even want a glimpse into the mind of this berry guy, I swear. Uh, but the nasty plot is nice because it's able to give us a nice little plus two, and it does need that help with that base 88 special attack. But now we're actually looking real nice because I also do have the Terror Blast, the Metagross stayed asleep and we just started blasting. Terra Blast ground actually goes kind of crazy, and that ends up knocking out the Metagross before it was able to become you know, too much of a problem. So, Petra Run is now in a pretty nice position. We got our bull cut out with the Terra ground. We're still at full HP, 
And now they decide to go into the Flygon. So I know that I can take an attack from this thing for sure. I do have the Air Balloon, so it can't go for a Stab Earthquake and kind of forces it to go for the Dragon move. However, they forget about the Air Balloon, which honestly happens to me all the time. <laughs> but I'm able to float above it with my cool little balloon, fire off a Malignant Chain at him. And while I don't get the Coin Flip Poison, we're still actually in a great spot here because this then forces them to go for the Outrage. And that's not going to do a lot. It kind of reveals, after they pop my balloon, even if they did hit me with that Earthquake, it's not going to be able to do too much. Which then I can fire off another little Mochi chain at his ass, and we do end up getting the coin flip that time. And that is going to give him a poison and confuse him. So this Flygon feels like me after a night of Taco Bell. He's all poisoned and confused, doesn't know what the hell's going on. And I find myself in a kind of a unique position here, right? Because he has to take a turn of confusion if he wants to get more damage. And then he actually, if he hits himself, he's going to just end up dying. So I decide to roll the dice even further and go for the <laughs> nasty plot as it does hit itself in confusion. And then Petra runs like, hey, where'd you go, buddy? I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be over here. Just, uh, just thinking some crazy shit. I go for that nasty plot. Now we're sitting at plus four. And that's the way Petra Runt rolls. Sometimes you get you know, kind of a great turn like that, and you can really punish the opponent for, you know, kind of just existing. But now they decide to bring in Techno Muck. This thing is straight out of the rave. I do have the Terra Blast ground here, and with the plus four, this, I don't care how specially defensive this thing is, even if it's like a Salt Vested or something like that, a Stab Terra Blast ground is going to absolutely destroy my guy, and down goes the Muck. And uh, at this point, Petron is absolutely going crazy. It's honestly, it's a super interesting Pokemon, because... If you don't get lucky with the rolls, you, you find yourself in a position where you're not going to make that big of a difference, but then you get super rewarded if you do get those kind of luck rolls. So, they now decide to go into Blaziken, going to go for that Protect turn 1. He, he does dodge the chain now, but he's going to get a nice little speed boost and just be even faster than me as he was before. Uh, but speed boost Blaziken is a problem, however, I am literally the most defensive little berry in the damn world. And I can take a close combat, no problem, knocks me down to 69 HP. Nice, but more importantly, doesn't really do much at all and gives him the special defense drop. I go for that Malignant Chain just because I'm out here just being a problem and it does just knock that thing out, especially with the special defense drop. And down goes the Blaziken. So now they're down to one final Pokemon, which is going to be the Terapog Terapagos. I don't know, it's the turtle thing that comes in here on Neo Pet like and then transforms into a Frisbee. And they probably should have gone into this thing earlier because I know it gets coverage uh, with special attacks here. They end up outspeeding, they go for the Toxic, which... I figured, hey, that's actually, that's fine. They know that they resist my stab, but even, I mean, after plus four, this turtle's, he's gonna have a bad time. I go for the malignant chain just to see uh, if I can be out here doing some more annoying Petra Berry shit. I do end up doing about half with the plus four, and I do get the poison, which is, honestly, at this point, I feel kind of bad, but not bad enough to the point where I don't want to control his ass like a puppet. So I do get the confusion and the, the poison here, uh, and after some leftover recovery, is definitely going to die if this thing takes uh, a turn of confusion. So, uh, here's why I say they probably should have gone into the Tropicos earlier, is because it does have access to coverage with special attacks. At the HP that I'm at, I definitely die to just about anything here, as I am poisoned. It's kind of funny seeing me poison. A little bit of taste of my own Petra Berry medicine here. Actually, Petra Berry would actually be kind of nice here uh, to heal that poison. However, regardless, they're going to end up going for the Terra here. They also should have probably gone for the Terra earlier, because that's going to make this thing all sorts of crazy sparkly. And a Terra Star Storm is definitely going to bop my ass. So they are going to take the turn of confusion here. They're going to be like, duckies, just hold hold on here for a second. They do break through and the Star Storm comes out. Especially because I am Trastalized, it's going to be super effective no matter what. And uh, I do not have the special defense to handle that. So down goes the Petron. Almost completed the full, the full action out here. But it's fine. He did what he needed to do. And I do have some answers for the turtles in the back because Petra's just been out here putting the team on his back thus far. Um, this thing is still poison and it's also, it's a toxic poison so it does, um, it does increase damage. So this thing is around half HP and I know that I do have the Hitmonchan who is specially defensive. I got boxing gloves all up over the place and with an iron fist punching glove boosted mock punch, the turtle is going to get his shell absolutely bopped out here. So it's also important that Hitmonchan should be able to take an attack here, being specially defensive. I go for that mock punch, not quite enough to knock this thing out. Still has to try to burn another turn of confusion here as it does break through. The Terra Star Storm, however, is not quite going to be enough for the power that is Hitmonchan. Who wins? One little guy with boxing gloves or a crazy ass legendary sparkly turtle with the power of every element and I don't know what the hell this thing's deal even is. But uh, one more turn of poison is going to bring it to the point where a mock punch 
uh, is going to be able to finish this thing off with that priority. And that is going to be the end of the match. So I thought it was just interesting to kind of see how crazy the, the Petra Runt can really, can really go off if you catch people off guard. And uh, not a lot of people are, are figuring out how to handle this thing at this moment in time as it's a super new Pokemon. But overall, kind of just a goofy match. And I feel like this, this thing has potential. It can either be really good or really bad. I haven't figured it out yet. However, I'm coming at you with one more match with a little bit of a different Petra Berry guy just to see how things go. So in match number two, I do get these games from my Discord server. If you're interested in joining the community or possibly battling me whenever I'm looking for matches, go ahead and join. Today we got a match against Cody and he has an interesting team as we're also... We're both working with a Dodrio, and I like this dude's style. So, he also has a Petra Run of his own, now let's get into it. So first of all, I don't know what I did to piss the universe off today. However, it turns out I'm playing against two spiders, two different spiders who try to lay up the sticky web. So, they lead off with the Araquanid, and this time, with this team, I actually do not have access uh, to hazard removal. So, I'm just gonna have to deal with it out here, as I'm gonna be out here leading off with the Swamp Hurt, and I just wanna go for that Stealth Rock turn one. I wanna set that up as, of course, they set up their Sticky Web, and while that is annoying, I have a couple different options on my team that aren't gonna be super affected by that, and I figure, yeah, that's that's kinda fine. And I decide to just go for the knockoff. I figure a Liquidation is this thing's best damage against me. If I can get rid of its item, if it's like a Assault Vest or something like that, I can make it a little bit easier to handle with some chip. But, they go for the Liquidation, and with the water bubble boosted damage, it does a whole lot, even to defensive Swampert. And I do kind of want to keep this thing around. So, I'm going to end up going for the flip turn. In case they want to switch, I can get myself a momentum pivot. However, they do just stay in. And of course, flip turn doesn't hurt this thing a lot. But now I have to figure out kind of what wants to come in on Araquanid. I swear, this thing is more of a problem than people give it credit for. And I actually don't have a lot on my team that wants to switch into this. But I do have Chester Cheeto and his scary ass comes in. I can get an Intimidate. I know that I can take at least one liquidation here. My main goal at this point is to try to weaken it enough to where I can then start to set up something in the back. So I want to go for the parting shot here. After an intimidate plus a parting shot, this thing's not going to be able to liquidation his ass out of a wet paper bag. And I'm feeling pretty solid that uh, either Petrant can start to come in here, but I feel like it's a little bit too early. And instead, what I'm going to go ahead and do is bring in the damn zebra. Zapidash is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and this thing is. Listen, he's not that great, but he can come in here and even after Sticky Web, I know that I'm faster than old Skinny Legs over here. So I get that speed drop, I know that I can take an attack, they end up just going for the Crunch, which does nothing. And at this point, I can go for that Super Cell Slam, and Araquanid does not have the physical defenses to take that. So, absolutely squish the shit out of the spider, and down goes that thing after being just annoying for the early game. So, I do take a little bit of Life Orb Recoil, but the, listen, the Zebra's ready for whatever they got. As they decide to bring in Vileplume, and one of the best parts about using Zebstrika is it does have a lot of different opportunities for the kind of a little element of surprise. So here's the thing, I'm going to go for the Flame Charge. I am still faster even after Sticky Web. That's going to do almost half here as I get a nice little speed boost myself. But more importantly, they're actually going to end up going for the Strength Sap, and that is going to activate my Sap Sipper. They try to sap me, and I just sip them right back. So that's why I love this thing. It actually it has access to... Volt Absorb, but then also Sap Zipper, which people definitely sleep on. So I'm able to trigger that nicely. And I'm thinking, please have enough damage with this next Flame Charge. And of course, the Vile Plume lives it on literally 1 HP. And unfortunately for me, this now means I have to take a Sludge Bomb from this thing. And I am going to go down. So this was this was truly the Zeb Striker that almost could. I, I, <laughs> I did at least weaken the Vile Plume to a point where it's easily manageable. And that's actually pretty valuable, because this thing is defensive, it's annoying with the Strength Sap, and now at least I can bring in old Tripod, the Dodrio, outspeed it, and they don't have a lot of switch-ins to this, which is kind of hilarious. Dodrio is low-key kind of a threat, I'm not even going to lie. So they are just going to end up staying in here, letting this thing go down to the Drill Peg, it's not really worth saving the slow Vile Plume, so... Unfortunately, this thing does affect Spore Meat from the damn dead, and of course I get the Poison, which... Isn't actually a huge deal. It would actually have been kind of funny if it put me to sleep because then I have early bird ability, which I wake up like turn two or something like that. But the poison's actually better because, listen, Dodrio's the kind of guy who's here for a good time and not a long time. He does a little bit of damage and then just kind of, kind of dips out. But the bad news is this now allows them a revenge switch and they decide to bring in their own Petra run. So I do have the coverage with the drill run, but of course, I know the defensive capabilities of this little bastard, and it pretty much does nothing to it, and then allows him to go for the recover. So it's actually pretty important to know that this thing is working with a set that is going to be more of kind of longevity there with the recover, uh, and it means that potentially it's it's fully defensive 
Um, but overall, it's it's probably going to be here with like a nasty plot. But I just decided to stay in. I'm going to go for another drill run. It's going to have to knock me out eventually. And I just honestly, I want some chip on this thing before I'm able to go down. But instead, they now decide to go for that parting shot, which is actually also really good to know. And that means he has two attack slots left. It's probably going to be the malignant chain uh, and then something like a hex. But uh, they're not going to end up pivoting into their own Dodrio. Theirs looks sick as hell out here, literally. Like Buddy's got an illness out here, eating some poison berries. Got it, got it too close to the old Petrunt over there. And I, before, I figured, you know, Dodrio actually has a good speed tier here to get some damage off later. So I'm going to end up switching back into the Incineroar. I don't really have the HP to make a difference in the match. But I can come in, get an Intimidate here. And my main plan is this. I know that I'm going to die here. They go for the Body Slam, which I actually end up living, which is kind of crazy. I, I figured I was going to die. However, I really want to try to get in my own Petrunt. So they do outspeed another Body Slam. Flattens my ass to a wrestling pancake, and down goes the Incineroar. But I did get an Intimidate off on this thing, and now is the perfect time to get my Petra Runt going. So I come in. I am still floating on my Air Balloon, but this is actually its a little bit of a different set with this thing. Um, I am going to be carrying the Recover myself, and at this point, I'm going to go for the Nasty Plot. I figure, you know, there's nothing that this thing can really do to me. It's kind of just a free little plus two, and they decide we're going to go berry on berry action out here. As theirs comes in. Pulls out his weird little berry ears, and he does take take some stealth rock, and we do actually also have a nice little chip on this to where, after a nasty plot, it should actually be in range to go down to a hex, unless they have the Terra. So, it's a little bit weird having the hex coverage here for the ghost type, where if they don't have a poison, it's not going to be max damage, but after a nasty plot, a hex is going to be able to take care of it, and my berry reigns supreme. I do get a crit, which I don't believe mattered, but... Down goes their Petrarunt, which is a big threat, and now mine is looking even better. This is going to allow them to now bring in the Azel. So I'm thinking, all right, this is kind of a problem. I likely just take a pretty hard-hitting Psychic here, and I'm going to have to go for the Terra. So this one's actually working with the Terra Ghost. I want to basically just try to get as much damage as possible with the Hex. But more importantly, I can go for the Terra Ghost to rid myself of the Poison type, knowing that I can then take you know any psychic type attack they want to throw at me. So I put the old ghost on my head, but he's looking badass out here. And as it turns out, this is actually going to be a physical attacking Azelf with the Psycho Cut, which allows it to essentially do nothing. Does pop my balloon and kind of shits on my parade a little bit, which is fine. But then I fire off a Hex, and even without the poison, Azelf is going to go down, especially with that extra boost. In damage with that uh, that Terra Ghost, we are looking nice. So physical attacking Azelf comes in clutch for me at least. And now they're running a little bit low on options. As Dodrio comes in, and the only coverage this thing is going to have is going to come in the form of knockoff. Where I've already had my balloon pop, so I actually don't have an item. They can outspeed, get the super effective knockoff, but without an item, it's not going to do enough. And we are defensive as tits, and I can then fire off a malignant chain to finish it off. Down goes the Dodrio, and Petrarun is just absolutely that dude. So... The final Pokemon is going to be Volcarona, and this thing is still a bit of a problem because anytime there's a damn Volcarona around, you run the risk of Quiver Dance absolutely ruining your day. And that's exactly what this thing is going to do. Goes for the Quiver Dance turn one here, and I just decide to go for that chain. I want to try to try and like roll that poison. If I can get the poison and the confusion, we can make sure that this thing isn't that big of a problem. It does take less than half from that, and I do not get the poison, which is kind of wildly unfortunate. But they then go for a Fiery Dance here. And this is why Petrarun is the GOAT. Somehow I'm able to live it with literally one HP, which is kind of the craziest shit ever. I fire off another chain here, and the icing on the cake is it actually just ends up killing it with a crit, which is actually kind of hilarious. And I'm telling you, this Petra Berry is an asshole. It's actually kind of a, kind of a crazy mon. Uh, regardless, if it ended up not getting a crit there, there's a high chance for the poison. Uh, but overall, I yeah, Volcarona goes down, and that's going to be the end of the match. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on the videos, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.